Hi, well, uh, today I'm going to be making a sphere. Someone's asked me to turn a piece of spalted beach they've had in the garage for about 25 years into something, and a sphere is what we decided upon. Uh, I can get about an 8 inch round here. Uh, it's um, a bit tricky at the top. That's about the diameter. It's about 10 inches, 9 or 10 inches long at the maximum. Uh, so I'm going to trim out a hole here for uh, the tail stock drive and pop it between centres, uh, turn it a bit to round and turn some uh, tenons on the end I think. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Just a little bit more off this side so that it gets a full grip with the teeth. Okay, I'll just uh, get it onto the drive. So, turn it off and turn it on very gently. That's about 300 RPM, which is about the most I think it will do it at, at the moment. Quite a bit of gnarly bits in there, so let's try and find some to turn off. As you can see, the piece of wood is uh, uh, quite gnarly and uh, the uh, tool does tend to bounce off a bit, but just taking it steady and using the point of the bowl gouge to take out a little nibble at a time and slow progress is made. Uh, the speed slowly gets turned up from 300 to about 500 RPM. Beyond that, even the 1628 was starting to bounce about a bit. And as the knots get removed, uh, the gnarly bits get removed, you can get a bit of bevel rubbing going on and trying to get a slightly better finish. Slowly does it. Plenty of practice at cutting air. Uh, that shows uh, quite clearly how uh, knobbly the ends were. You just have to hold on and be careful, take it steady and do find the bevel when you can. Okay, so I'm just uh, going to mark this out before I go any further. Um, so I've got a centre line, it's about, it's about 240 mil of usable sphere, if I allow some of these recesses, which I think are really characterful to, to remain. The geometry of your sphere is defined by this illustration that I downloaded off the internet. So if you measure out 29% um, of the diameter off the one corner and cut that off at 45 degrees as you'll see I do in a minute then you're dead on the tangent point. So I've got a mark here and a mark there and I'll try and strike a straight line between them and that will start to define 
the sphere. I've used carbides here because uh, it just felt more comfortable with the wood being so uh, dry and uh, chippy. And it worked quite well. Right, the next dimension is point 0.1 of the diameter either side of that tangent point. The plan was that after I'd rounded off the corners uh, that I would set up the Paul Howard sphere jig and uh, use that to now turn it into a sphere. The problem was that I managed to knock the carbide cutter and break the cutter tip. So I've had to improvise. I've used the uh, bottom part of the uh, sphere jig, which has got the pivot point under the mid-centre of the sphere. Uh, but the cutting rig I've taken out and I've put in a woodcarver's platform uh, that I've got that happens to have the same um, post size. Uh, put that in. Uh, used a regular uh, round-nosed carbide uh, scraper and a G-clamp and clamp that to it. Uh, and actually it works extremely well as a um, hybrid. Obviously unlike the uh, proper um, rig which has got the adjustable um, screw thread on it so that you can bring the cutter in uh, to exactly where you want it to be. Uh, this was just done by slackening off the G-clamp. Doing it this way was quite effective though because it allowed me to quite easily adjust the uh, length of the overhang of the cutter to get uh, into the corners. Well, that worked out all right. I just got a little uh, tabletop uh, from wood carving, which fits the 16mm hole. And I just clamped on a carbide. Uh, so the tool uh, didn't get right into the corners, uh, got a reasonable way in. Uh, so now it's a question of finishing it off by hand uh, and getting a good quality uh, finish on the surface because the carbide cutter is acting as a scraper so there was some plucking as it really is hard dry and slightly punky uh, sported beach so prior to actually uh, taking it off and dealing with the nubs uh, lots of sanding needed um, started off with the uh, uh, random orbital round sander and then moving on to the simon hope uh, sanding system Lots and lots of sanding, including some local work, because uh, uh, again, the, there was quite some uh, plucking in certain areas. So I wanted to retain the uh, in inclusions, uh, the natural bark finish, uh, and also to fill some of the cracks. And I decided that I'd fill some of the cracks with copper dust and super glue. Uh, so uh, now it's a question of working my way around all the uh, little features uh, with. Um, the Dremel, various bits and a sanding arbor. The wood had got some really quite soft uh, bits uh, down the middle, so it required quite a lot of uh, digging out to actually uh, make sure that the sphere was going to stay as, uh, oh, as one piece. There are also quite a lot of deep cracks in the wood that needed gluing up. Uh, but before I glued it up, I didn't want any super glue to stain the surface. So I uh, slothered lots of uh, dilute cellulose sanding sealer over it and it soaked it up like a sponge. So uh, I put that on so that when I put the super glue in the cracks, it didn't stain the wood surface. Good trick to know that one. 
the sanding sealer uh, really brought out some uh, lovely figuring uh, on the wood. I had thought of doing it with an oil, but I um, I wanted to make sure that this would go off and get deeply into it within a reasonable time frame, and then it had to be able to be glued up. I didn't think an oil would take kindly to me gluing up in the cracks after it had soaked into them. So good old cellular sanding sealer. Okay, so I'm just going to um, glue and fill some of the cracks with like a copper dust uh, just to stabilize it because this is quite fissured. So before I actually put any super glue and stuff on there, I'm just going to actually um, mask and tape up the bits that I don't want it to damage. Okay, well, this is to try and stop it. For, if it runs, it doesn't run down the face. It's been sealed with just that sanding sealer, so it, it will come off. Uh, but it is better to avoid having to do all the hard work to start with. Having the copper dust in these little bottles with a nozzle it's quite helpful because you can uh, get it right into the cracks. Uh, in this case I decided to put the dust in dry uh, without the um, uh, CA glue in to start with. Um, doesn't matter too much really but whatever you do you've got to dibble it in with a palette knife and make sure that it goes in well and truly. And then uh, using some of the Poundland uh, super glue with a very fine nozzle, just uh, get that into the copper dust and then rub it in with the palette knife uh, so that it really creates like a puree and gets right down deep into the cracks. You've got to do this lots of different times because as the glue dries, it, it will uh, create a dimple. Uh, so you've got to top it up. Could do it with it two-part epoxy, uh, aerodite type stuff out of the syringes. Um, it doesn't really matter either way, uh, but I chose to do it uh, this way on this particular occasion. It also helps to have different grades of glue. The Poundland stuff is extremely thin, which is great for getting right in, uh, but sometimes using the more medium grade is also helpful because it goes off a bit more slowly and you can create a, a puree with it. Obviously the palette knife will get uh, heavily glued up so quite regularly you have to go along with a, a blade and just uh, cut off the stuff that's glued on there. comes off okay. It's uh, I've got now a copper knife, well and truly bonded on. And then basically quite a lot of rinse and repeat going all around, filling the cracks, doing it again, filling the cracks, doing it again. And then when that's all done and it's all gone off, then it's time to uh, peel off the masking tape and uh, start uh, removing the excess. Using the blade and sometimes a chisel is quite handy to get the excess off because uh, you need to get it down as close to the main surface as possible before you then get the sanding uh, rigs out, uh, in this case the Simon Hope system again, uh, to uh, sand the surface down. Then having taken off the bulk uh, with the uh, flat sanding system, then I've gone back to the Dremel with the flat wheels uh, to get into the uh, channels to try and get a bit of a burnished sheen to the copper uh, without uh, removing all the wood either side. It was quite tricky getting into this particular deep channel 
so I did actually use different Dremel tools to get right in there, including some uh, fine grinding stones as well, just to uh, smooth the uh, roughened copper uh, glue finish. So that was all done uh, with it still between the original centers. So it's now time to put on a couple of cup chucks, one in the headstock and one uh, which you will have seen perhaps on a previous video which I made as a little um, sleeve that goes over the tail stock drive um, and uh, some router mat on there. Um, I might actually in the future uh, take off the router mat and put a little bit of the uh, neoprene that I've still got left over from my son's wetsuit because I think it needs a little bit more um, buffering so that when you wind it up, because you've got to wind it up quite tightly, uh, that it doesn't dent it. So I've just chosen a couple of places on the sphere which are not um, not uh, got any um, features on, so they are genuinely spherical. Uh, and now I'm just trying to get it all centered up so that it runs as true as possible. So as you can see, I've got it uh, set up now with the knobs sticking out, um, ready to be trued off. Uh, it's running pretty close to uh, the original sphere. It's not spot on, so I've got to be careful not to cut too much off and find that I'm then um, going to have to reshape the sphere as a whole. So I just want to remove this right down so that it just touches the surface rather than actually cutting it beyond. And the rest I'll do by sanding. So a bit of shear scraping just to finesse it, uh, and then uh, done on both sides, and then after that down to uh, sanding and blending it in. So after I'd uh, sanded it smooth again, uh, I then went over the whole thing again. Uh, tooking, uh, taking the, the cellular sanding sealer down uh, back to the surface again, then coated it again in cellular sanding sealer uh, so it was completely sealed in a uniform coating. So with that done, uh, uh, time to then uh, burnish it up. So I've used some Yorkshire grit uh, uh, compound uh, to rub that well in and burnish it by hand before uh, going on to the um, uh, buffing wheel system. So there we have it. I think it came out really rather well. All the features show up uh, very well indeed. The copper adds a little bit of accent to it and uh, getting it uh, properly spherical except for where all the indents are of course was also quite fun particularly with the DIY rig. I think I'll probably make another one. What do you think?